Hello everyone, welcome to my video. I am Sian Song and I will be talking about and exploring and hopefully bringing up some interesting topics to think about between the good place and the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Cardcastle and with a bit more focus on the connection between improvement and identity brought up in these two forms of media. So to start off with, I will be giving a brief and short introduction and summary of the two, starting off with The Good Place. The Good Place is a Netflix show that ran from 2016 to 2020, and it consists of four seasons. Our protagonist, Eleanor Shellstrom, finds herself in the afterlife and is happy to, of course, find herself in The Good Place. There's just one problem. As it turns out, Eleanor reveals that she does not truly belong in The Good Place, as she was never really a good person, let alone one good enough to have accumulated enough good points to go to The Good Place. She enlists the help of her quote-unquote soulmate, Chitty Anagonye, who was a moral philosophy professor, to teach her how to be good in order to be able to belong in The Good Place. As Eleanor and Chidi grow closer in her journey to become a good person, they also befriend the, their neighbors, Jianyu and Tahani Aljamil, and the architect of their good place neighborhood, Michael. Eleanor, however, managed to figure out that the four of them are not even in the real good place, but that they're in the bad place because apparently all four of them deserved to be in the bad place. So, for example, Eleanor, as we find out, her biggest flaw was being selfish. Chidi, while not necessary, while not inherently malicious or cruel or any way, his inability to make a decision brought a lot of suffering to the people around him, which resulted in him being in the bad place. Jianyu, who we then later figure out is actually Jason, a man from Florida, would be too impulsive, which would again bring create a lot of troubles for people around him, as well as Tahani who, while she did do good deeds, all of those deeds were done with a selfish desire for recognition as well as fame and acclaim. And as it turns out, Michael devised this fake good place in order for the four of them to torture each other through their flaws. After the shock reveal, Michael resets the entire experiment. He erases the memories of the four and attempts another round in order to succeed. However, contrary to ex expectations, not only does Eleanor keep figuring out they're in the bad place, they also actually improve in becoming better people every time. And this has gone on for many, many attempts, I believe reaching even like 800 attempts. After many attempts, the show complicates further, and essentially the four are then returned to Earth right before the deaths and prevented from dying their original deaths in order to see if they can improve like they did in the bad place. With interference and complications from the bad place entities, the four, now calling themselves the Soul Saving Squad, manage to help and improve people close to them and are forced into being dead again. The reason is because the entire afterlife is revealed to be no longer effective with the way the world has turned and turned out and developed into. So instead of being black and white in terms of good and bad, the scale, in a sense, is now largely gray, with good actions having bad consequences, and the afterlife system has not updated to take that into account. As a result, nobody has entered the good place in 500 years. Essentially, the in the end, the squad manages to improve and become better as well as successfully redesign the afterlife system in a way that gives people a second chance to improve and join the real good place in the end, as well as them, of course, also joining the good place. I also apologize if I end up saying the seven and a half husbands of Evelyn Hardcastle. The book has a very similar title to a, another book, which is why it's called The Seven and a Half Deaths instead of The Seven Deaths, because there's, the, the title was too similar. There really is no other half death of Evelyn Hardcastle. But The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle is a mystery novel written by Stuart Turton, published in 2018. 
our main character, Aiden Bishop, wakes up in a body he knows is not his, yet he cannot remember where he is, who he is, and why he is there. He later finds out that he is, for some reason, stuck in a mysterious place where he is forced to solve the yet-to-happen murder of Evelyn Hardcastle if he wishes to escape, but he is not the only one. The story then follows Aiden as he not only has to remember why he's there, but also be the first one to solve the murder in order to escape, and he also has to avoid one of the players who seems determined to murder all of his hosts before he can solve the mystery. It is a race against time in several aspects. In similar fashion to The Good Place, Aiden finds out that he is actually in a prison and that he does not belong there. We find out that Aiden actually broke into the prison in order to exact some personal revenge against one of the prisoners, Anna, which creates a dilemma as Aiden develops a strong and almost romantic partnership with Anna throughout the story. This prison is intriguing as there are different levels of mysteries in accordance to the severity of one's crimes. Not only that, but the murder that these prisons, prisoners have to solve is also related to their crimes and, in a sense, karmic justice. For example, Evelyn Hardcastle is a younger sister whose murder they have to solve. Anna is revealed to be the very worst criminal they have managed to imprison so far, and she was finally convicted due to the torture and murder of a younger sister who, as you might have guessed, was Aiden's younger sister. There are actually many aspects to examine within the story itself, along with its similarities to The Good Place. However, due to time constraints, I will be focusing mainly on the aspect of identity and improvement and morality that is introduced both within TV show and book. This begs the question, why am I talking about the two and what do the two might, and what connection might the two necessarily have between each other? Well, first and foremost, the concept that the two share is the concept of improvement and its connection to identity and moral growth, etc. In relation to this, one element that occurs in both TV show and book is how they lose their memories and start over. And this happens 800 times to the Soul Saving Squad, and this has happened more than 10 times to Aiden and Anna and the third mysterious party. The characters no longer remember the previous quote-unquote life and have essentially lost their progress and sense of identity. Or have they? Does one's improvement count if they don't remember the past? Should a person's lost memories of who they were or what they did in the past count for how they are in the present? How important or relevant even are memories in order to determine a person's future? Both the show and book kind of take different stances on this. So another question that came up is how important should one's past be in the journey of improvement? For example, Chidi himself is on two stances. In season two, he is believing that the memories and the past him the memories he does not remember and the existence of him in the past are relevant and important to his moral improvement as he worries whether the current him is the most morally improved or could it have been a different version. However, later in season 4, Chidi no longer appears to believe that and is does not prioritize or put much focus on the fact that he has had memories as well as a past that he does not remember in accordance to what that might mean or affect his current moral improvement or sense of identity. So is the past relevant or irrelevant? What about memories? We also see this quite prominently in Eleanor as one reason she believes to be the reason why she becomes a bad person is because of the poor home life and lack of parental love she received from her parents. So in a sense, her sense of identity is a bad person due to her past of lack of affection from her parents. However, even with that, once she receives 
nearly all of the past memories in which she finds out that she can actually open herself up and fall in love without worrying about it going south or anything of the sort, she argues that that is not real because those memories aren't hers or that they weren't real or that she because she herself does not really remember it, that does not matter in nor affect who she is as a person. However, in the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, they, Aiden, at the very least, seems to take a surprisingly firm stance on Anna, who was a mass terrorist, murderer, criminal, who no longer remembers who she is and only remembers herself as Anna. In fact, Aiden himself says to one of the prison guards, Because you're so blinded by who Anna used to be, you're ignoring who she's become, and if you're not willing to accept she's changed, then what good is any of this? So in this sense, Aiden believes that the past does not matter if you are changed in the future. While I believe that was a valid argument, this also made me think about a, this also I feel becomes harder to really agree with or disagree with because again Anna no longer has her memories. She is in a sense not really the criminal Anna. She is Blackheath Anna who has had to uh, fight for survival and create form the bond with Aiden. However, Blackheath is a prison or as the prison guard likes to say, rehabilitation center. Then where do we go from there? And even with and to add to this topic and exploration um, we still see how the past affects the present in both TV show and book. I wanted to bring up a specific example in how Anna subconsciously throughout the book will resort to choosing to making choices or actions that's, that seem reminiscent of the criminal that Anna no longer remembers being. And... We also see how Eleanor's first life on Earth still affects how she becomes who she is in the once she's entered the afterlife and what makes and how that forces her to face her flaws and also to make her realize exactly where she needs to improve on. So even if so if, how irrelevant could the past possibly be? Or how unimportant could the memories be to one's identity and therefore improvement if the past is what affects the present? Or if it even affects the present? So to conclude, there are so many intricacies and factors that tie into each other when exploring the afterlife system and prison in The Good Place and the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, especially when comparing the two together. For example, once again, is the sense of identity and its connection to improvement, how does that affect becoming a good or better person? And in relation to moral improvement, are these two systems effective? Why did the good place succeed while Blackheath, in a sense, did not? Especially with these two systems being quite surprisingly similar. And due to constraint, time constraints and the complexity of philosophy and humanity, I am unable to answer these questions myself but I hope it gives you something to think about. Thank you for watching.